These are some of the paratroopers who dropped into Normandy on D-Day. Now, as far as the military goes in World War II, the paratroopers were among the most highly trained men that the U.S. sent overseas. As we've seen in previous episodes of American Artifact, these guys packed a lot of gear into combat. But one thing that they were strictly forbidden to take was a camera. Well, fortunately for us, some of the guys broke that rule, like Forrest Guth, who jumped with Easy Company of the 506th Parachute Infantry Regiment. In this episode, we're traveling with Eric Dorr of the Gettysburg Museum of History to the exact spot in Normandy where Guth took some of what would become the most famous photos of World War II. So we're at the Marmion farm right now, and this was a hotbed of action on June 6, 1944. It was uh, a German stronghold, and there was, it was fought by uh, elements of the 502nd Parachute Infantry Regiment of the 101st Airborne, and also the 506. And uh, most namely, uh, Major Stuka of, Stuka of the 502nd. Um, and there was a big fight here, and after they finally captured this farm, there was a series of very iconic photos taken here. And um, one, of the, one of the people who came upon this farm was Forrest Goose. And at the Gettysburg Museum of History, of course, we have some of Forrest Goose items, including some of his photographs and negatives that were taken right here on this spot. And uh, probably one of the most famous photos that's been circulated in most books about D-Day was taken here also. So here's Forrest Guth and a bunch of other men, and Forrest Guth is exhibiting a German helmet that he must have picked up sometime during this fight. But the coolest thing for me is this holster right here, which is the 1911 that we have in our collection. Now, if you look at the picture and you look at the windows in the background, it's taken right here at this spot. So here's one of the snapshots that Forrest Goose obviously handed his camera off to another trooper. That's Fra Francis Mallet over on the left and Forrest Guth right here. And they're showing a German flag that they picked up here. Supposedly one of the first German flags captured in Normandy. And uh, we have the negative and Michel de Trez at D-Day Experience Museum I believe has that flag. And the photo was taken right here. Here's another photo that Eric has in his collection that was taken in the exact same spot. So this guy right here, his name is John Eubanks, and then this guy here on the right is Smokey Gordon. It looks like they may have the same flag from the last picture, but uh, it was taken right here in this very spot. Here's another one of Forrest Goose photographs taken here at the Marmion Farm. <clears throat> it's identified left to right, Walter Smokey Gordon, Floyd Talbert, John Eubanks, one guy unknown, and then Private Francis Mallet. And, you know, this looks probably like it was taken by Goose, since he's not in the photograph. That's pretty cool that this one you can kind of identify a little bit easier because you got like window here. Yeah. And then window there. And then, of course, the, the edge of the building, and not to mention the gate. <laughs> and the gate, that, yeah, those those make that that one yeah, a little bit I, easier to identify. Yeah, because I keep thinking, you know, some of these um, arches have been changed. Well, you can tell from the stones. Yeah, yeah, it makes it easier to identify. 
All right, now here's another photo that was taken from this very spot. Now this isn't one of Forrest Guth's photos. This is a Signal Corps photo that was taken after the fight here. And uh, it shows a bunch of 101st Airborne guys with these captured French tracked vehicles. And it was taken right here in front of this very building. So the man who took this picture was standing right where I am right now. And this is kind of easy to, to pick out. You know, you have these two windows here. Well, there are the two windows right there. And then the door with the two smaller arched windows flanking it on either side. But uh, pretty amazing to think about what happened here on June 6, 1944. And uh, that we're here kind of walking in those steps now. This is Major Stopka and some of his men of the 502nd getting ready to assault the Marmion farm. They're making plans right here, and I'm gonna flip over to this photograph. This is another photograph. Now these were snapshots taken, you know, and so they're not really good quality, but it shows the farmhouse here, and, and you can see the two chimneys, and they're on the other side of the stone wall that's right behind me, and they are getting ready to storm this property, the Marmion farm, on June 6, 1944. So perhaps the most famous photo taken at the Marmion Farm is this one. This was taken on D-Day and um, again you're seeing a captured German flag. The guy holding the flag is James Flanagan of C Company 502 101st Airborne. There's 502nd and 506 guys in this picture. Now there used to be a rumor on the internet that this was Albert Blythe of Easy Company and it was later determined that it is not. But um, this photo has probably appeared in more books about D-Day and the Utah, Utah Beach Airborne Sector than any other photo. And it was taken right here. And you look around and just imagine the history that happened here on June 6th. Well, those were some of the spots where a few of the, the most famous photos from World War II were ever taken. Right here on the Marmion Farm. Uh, pretty cool to, to stand in this place and uh, kind of reflect on, on what happened here and uh, be able to, to literally walk in the exact footsteps as some of these men did uh, all the way back in 1944.